you have to have the right mindset. You have to be filled with the right things. You have to be clear. You have to have clarity. You have to have knowledge. You have to have compassion. So the mindset is so, so, so important in coaching. You cannot coach well with an empty head. Hmm. You've got to come filled. You know that before I coach people in the morning, I, because because of my spiritual background, I do devotions, okay. okay? I pray and I go to the gym. So by the time I coach somebody early in the morning, I'm like, I'm prepared, bam, to go at it. I don't just like roll out of bed and then try to help somebody through the dilemma. Gotta have the right mindset. I'm sitting down with the legendary Tim Story talking about how to build a successful life coaching business. This is a 10 part series. This is episode six on how to have the right mindset. What do you got, man? Okay, when you think mindset, what do you think? Smart, you're talking to a smart man. Um, you put me on the spot, it's the best. I love it. I think, uh, I think making sure that you're you're motivated every day, making sure that you're Ooh, coming from service every day. Yes. Making sure that you're feeling bold every day. Good. And that you're showing up every day. Okay, good. How's All right, that? so so if you're coaching me, okay. I need you to have that to come to me. Okay. Because here's what I here's what I say. If you have nothing to give, how are you going to help me? So a lot of people, like they say, I want to give, I want to, I want to help, I want to, I want to help the hurting. Okay, I'm glad those are your motives, like we talked about earlier. But you have to have the right mindset. You have to be filled with the right things. You have to be clear. You have to have clarity. You have to have knowledge. You have to have compassion. So the mindset is so, so, so important in coaching. You cannot coach well with an empty head. Hmm. You've got to come filled. You know that before I coach people in the morning, I, cause, cause of my spiritual background, I do devotions, okay. okay? I pray and I go to the gym. So by the time I coach somebody early in the morning, I'm like, I'm prepared, bam, to go at it. I don't just like roll out of bed and then try to help somebody through their dilemma, gotta have the right mindset. How do you avoid, so a lot of people who do prayer, sometimes the, they come out of the prayer and it's and it's meaningful and they're moved and yeah. they felt the connection and they're set to go. And other days they just kind of went through the motions, read the prayer, asked for something, but then they don't have the same emotional connection after. How do you make sure that you come out of that prayer every single day feeling on fire. Ready okay, to so we're talking we're talking about how to strengthen your mindset. Mm -hmm. Because prayer and meditation will strengthen your mindset. Okay? And the mindset will change your mood set. I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. The mindset will change your mood set. So here's how I look at prayer and meditation. It is like plowing the ground and planting the seed. You plow the ground, you plant the seed. You don't just get the harvest the same every day. So some days you'll meditate and you'll pray. It doesn't feel the same, but you still have been plowing and then planting seed. But the seed that you planted may affect you in 30 minutes, but it may affect you in two days, three days, four days, five days. So a lot of my prayer meditation and my devotional time is not just for the present, but it's for my future. See, that's very, very powerful. Mm. So I'm, today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. Mm -hmm. This is the way I say it. So today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. So, so if I pray today and I study today, I may feel it today or I may feel it in three days, but I'm gonna feel the change. So today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. What's, what's the mindset that you wanna have on a daily basis? What, what active tips would you use? I wanna have a mindset of clarity hmm. i want 
to go into a coaching session because we're talking about being a life coach, right? I want to I want to go into that coaching session with clarity, and because the coach may be going through their own dilemma, so I got to make sure that I'm handling my emotions and the challenge of my mindset, so I can now hear what's going on here, because like somebody may say. I may say, hey, how are you doing? And they say, uh, not so well. Uh, a great friend of mine passed away. Mm -hmm. If you're not paying attention, you may say, oh, that's great. So let's talk about what we talked about last time. Right. People will miss it. Right. Okay, so clarity is super, super, super important. So that's where the meditation, the prayer, the devotion helps me to gain clarity, to deal with myself as an instrument of change to then also be able to be a better listener, as we talked about earlier, to the client that's talking to me. How about the mindset for you going into the next event or next session with a client yes. where maybe something happened? I use myself as an example. On our Before we came here, yes. my car was robbed. Yes. I lost my wallet, my driver's license, my six debit cards, all of my gear from my workshops and presentations, everything gone. Thousands and thousands of dollars worth of, of stuff plus headache, all gone. Now we got to go drive to Tim's story <laughs> and do a 10 yes. part series. So what would you do in that kind of situation where you had something negative happen to you, maybe just now, and then 10 minutes later, you have to jump into a session. Okay, with so number one, I, get, I give you and your family credit for how you handled it. Okay, thank you. you. you gotta, again, you gotta understand, I'm in my 50s, you're younger than me. So you, you tell me the story, right? Then how did I respond to you? Was I compassionate? Absolutely. Like for a long time, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Do you need anything? What can we do? Like, oh, wow. Like, let's take a while to transition. But you you guys transitioned so quickly, and a lot of it is because of your mindset. Your mindset was, at least I'm still alive. Right. Nobody got injured. They didn't take it all. That's your mindset. Mm -hmm. So your mindset helped you get through the dilemma, which was super, super powerful. Okay? So I commend you. Thank you. On that. So here's what's very, very important. Anybody can learn from this, whether you're a life coach, or you're a, a mother, a father, somebody dealing with somebody that's in a crisis, is that Clarity is so important. So what I feel like you did is you realize your loss. You saw Tim's story. You came in my house. You kind of like shook yourself. You turned the page and then you just kept going forward. Mm. Okay. To get the right mindset, you got to shake it off and you got to sometimes just turn the page. It's the this too shall pass. That's powerful stuff, don't you think? I love it, and I, I love the visual too. You gotta turn the page. Doing. Yeah, you turn the page. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it it it, it doesn't almost f feel like you like you lost everything right this second, right? Because we're so in this flow, right? Yeah. Okay. So life is going to give you the grace to handle the loss after these great interviews, and, and that's a beautiful thing about your life. So you, you're, you're, you're a person of faith. So grace fills in the gaps. Hmm. We all go through crap we don't like, but grace fills in the gaps. Hmm. So that's having the proper mindset. Uh, what do you recommend for your clients to do on a daily basis? You have your practice, you have your, your devotion, you have your workout. Do you guide your clients through a process to figure out a routine in the morning that sets them up for success? I think that they should get the Tim Story app, the utmost app on iTunes. Okay. Because <laughs> I do have an app. So I have an app that walks you through seven days of your week of how to be strong mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. And I even have meditations on this app. So it's called the utmost app with Tim Story. But... For my clients, I give them a lot of books to read. There's a really good book called Quiet. I don't know if you've ever read that okay. book. No. It's, it's about being still 
and being okay with being still. Mm -hmm. See, we have become human doings. This is a Tim Story saying, rather than human beings. And I'm, I'm telling you, we're missing it, man. Have you noticed how still I am? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just like, bam. Like, I'm just looking at all your power. I'm not like, ooh, what's next? I'm right here. So I'm, I'm super still. My mindset, my mindset, I tell you, is like, I say it this way. A magical mindset is your VIP pass anywhere. There's nowhere I can't get into with this. Hmm. This has got me everywhere. And do you think that that process that you go through of training, whether it's the devotion in the gym or the, the seven steps in your app, are they mostly universal? Like everybody needs quiet time. Everybody needs to go work out. Or there's 100% things... universal. You're going to use them for different things. Okay. If a woman has six kids or a man has six children, so you're going to use all that to handle having six children. <laughs> if a man's working two shifts, he's going to use it for that. If a man is Steve Harvey, then he's going to use what I'm saying for being Steve Harvey. So depending on your obligations and the way you do life is how you use those. But it's all universal. But everybody needs quiet time. Everybody. Man, we were, we were made to be quiet. Mm -hmm. We don't do well unless we're quiet. We, we were made to sleep without the television on. We were made to drive sometimes with no radio on. We were, we were made to stop, look, and listen and download beautiful thoughts from heaven. Is your devotional quiet time? My devotional is quiet time. I call it, I call it the holy ground versus the battleground. Okay. The world is the battleground. Okay. So you're just minding your own business and then they, they steal from your car. Right. That's the battleground. Okay. On a lighter version, we could go to a restaurant later tonight and the server may be in a bad mood and act funny. That's the battleground. Okay? So the battleground is just life. All the stuff that life's thrown at you. You need to go to the holy ground. The holy ground is that place of quiet where you get secrets, where you feel safe, where you feel significant, and to me where I'm hearing from God. So my holy ground is my strength from my battleground. See, I don't answer everybody's call because my my phone's ringing right now because everybody is having an urgent or somebody's having an urgent somewhere but their urgent according to Stephen Covey their urgent is not necessarily my urgent mm. so thank God for that caller ID stuff <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a number on my cell phone uh, that's amazing so we all need quiet time minimum what do you think mindset it depends on the person like I need a lot because I'm, I, I go through a lot. So I'm like an hour of day of just like, boom, I'm in, I'm in the trenches, but that's why I'm. So you'll wake up and do an hour of day of devotional in the morning. Yes. First thing. Like a machine. I love it. And then, and then I work come out, out like a machine. You, okay. I go to the gym. I'm already a machine before I hit the machines. Because of the quiet time you have. Heck yes. Interesting. Yeah. And I, and I get all these calls from overseas and like, I can see like urgent, 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 urgent. No, I can't do that. Because if I don't get filled up, I got nothing to give. And is there anything else that people need to be doing on a daily basis to get the mindset? Well, if they can't just sit at home and get the mindset, drive in their car with no music on or drive in the car with meditation music on and just, and just flow, okay? Whether you're quietly praying or just meditating, however you do life, but just do that. You could also do it by listening to like a book, like getting one of these books that we're talking about and listen to a book on tape and you're listening and you're, you're meditating and you're pondering and you're thinking and you're muttering. That's meditation. So, you know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So no wonder I'm so doggone clear because I choose to watch what I think about. I'm very, very careful. Hmm. I don't listen to a bunch of negative stuff. If somebody's speaking negative, I just, I kind of zone out. And would you call your devotional prayer? For me, it is, because that's my faith. So 
my, my, my devotional is a prayer life that I have to God. But also I'm studying like Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. So like Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want in the Hebrew means I shall not have anxious desire. So I'll meditate on that and I'll say, thank you God that today I will not have anxious desire. That no matter what comes my way, I will not be anxious. No matter what takes place, no matter what people say to me, no matter what people do to me, I will not be anxious. So someone can come to me and say, oh my God, I Googled you and somebody said something negative about you. I go, oh, that's all right, they'll be okay. And I mean it. Hmm. But you should see what they said. No, that's okay, they'll be okay. They go, no, they, they said about you. I said, that's okay, they'll be okay. But I really mean it, because I'm that into what the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not have anxious desire. So I choose not to have anxious desire. It's my choice. If, if we pull on that thread a little bit more, Faith, uh, James 1, 5, and 6 talks about how you get wisdom from God. Yes. So it's not just praying for forgiveness or praying for blessings or gratitude, but wisdom. Perfect. So in your time of meditation, that's a great scripture, in your time of prayer and meditation if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god right and so that's what's happening god's downloading wisdom let me just tell you something me and you are living beyond our pay grade <laughs> okay we're you're gonna make a lot of money i'm gonna make a lot of money our families are gonna be blessed they're, they're gonna be blessed three generations down that's just the way it's gonna be okay but I need God's wisdom to do what I do. I'm, I'm just, I, what I have to deal with every day is so up here. Mm. I need his wisdom, but he gives it to me. So do you pray for wisdom every morning? I, I, I don't pray for wisdom every morning because I haven't talked to you about that. That was a good scripture you reminded me of, but I pray and I get wisdom. Mm. But now that you've reminded me of that, I'm going to pray for wisdom as well. All right, there we go. <laughs> so you pumped that up. He just, just added to my life. I love it. Come back tomorrow. We'll see. There he is. He's even wiser if that's possible. <laughs> uh, and and for people who aren't religious, yeah. What's what is what's the meditation? What's the process? Well, if they were going to spend an hour, what are they doing in that hour? Well, a lot of people are not religious and they're doing great. You know, they're just they're they're just being quiet. So it could be a walk on the beach, right? Some guys are surfers that I know, just being out there surfing. Some people do yoga. Uh, some people are, are, are running and they're just in a, in a zone. I think it's more, uh, about, it's more about being quiet. But the, the great thing about prayer to this amazing, powerful God is that the God who created me is downloading heavy information. So I'll go that way. Cool, man. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.